Hello guys and girls and welcome to the GBA Week 8 match. The Brisadon fan are up versus the Philadelphia Scissors versus Chimpact. He has sadly a losing streak right now. He has uh, lost it two uh, weeks before and we're definitely planning on keeping that up. This is our out of conference match so it's not as important in the playoff race as other matches but this is an important match because last season actually we faced as well and that's where he won versus me. Because basically because I spat crap uh, too aggressively and uh, Chim just had a max speed duck to spat me and that's why I lost. So uh, yeah, we are up for some revenge and of course we want to win because currently we are, I think we are uh, two wins uh, in front of Joey, one win in front of Gio and one with uh, two losses behind, um, what you call it, and Jolt. So we'll never win. Would give us a little bit uh, breathing room versus the other two, and potentially if Jules loses at some point down the line, and we keep up winning, we might actually get the number one spot if we win versus him as well in our rematch. So, yeah, that's basically all the history behind the match. Not as important for player phrase, mainly important to get some revenge. And of course, I lost uh, uh, one last week uh, with a little bit of luck. So winning right now with uh, a great opponent as Chimp. He is definitely, even though he lost the last two weeks, he was definitely. One of the top contenders at the beginning of the season it dropped a little bit now. So getting a win right here could like prove us that we deserve these wins we got before. But either way, that is out in front of the history of the match. Now for the usual shoutouts before we go to team preview. Of course, shout out to Pablo for joining this team for me. His links in the description. And same of course for the common dude for recording this match for me. As you know, I do not have a capture card. I cannot live record. So I have to rely on guys like the common dude to help me out. So I can post narrate these matches for you right now. So if you're a fan of my content, you should be a fan of those guys too helping me out. So definitely give them a look. But that, these are the shoutouts. Now looking at team preview. If you want to know more about my team, what my team is all about, what his friends are, what my friends are, why these TV spread, why this moves, you can check out my team builder. Link for that is in the description as well. I uploaded that of course yesterday. Looking for a more in-depth look what I expect from this match to happen, for this match to happen. But for all we don't have the time for that, we have a Mega Man trick with Hidden Power Water and Ice Fang, then we got an Assault Death at Crocodile, we got a Physically Defensive Rocky Helmet Garbador, Assault Death at Lip Creum Black, Sugar Berry, Rock Polish, uh, Cobalion, and uh, Bulky Speedy, Cabia Berry, Tamofini. Looking at Bang Pons team, we brought the Victini, the Yuxi, the Shafu Bulu, the uh, Slurp of the Neo Lego, and the Green Ninja. And very big surprise on my part is that he brought neither of his ground types. He didn't brought the Kabanga Kanarot, he didn't brought the Zyga 10%. I was definitely expecting at least one of those, and yeah, now I'm sad because the fancy carriage I have on my uh, Manetric with Hidden Power Water and Ice Fang doesn't really come into play too much, and I certainly do not have Thunderbolt to like capitalize on him not having an electric resist. I only have Mold Switch, so if I want to have something hard, I sadly have to switch out right away away as well so that's a bit annoying but yeah he does have of course other threats i did expect to come past me he has a ninja i don't know which one of the both which one of them will be the z-move user both have some viability uh and having a z-move the Grinja might maybe with gunk shot or maybe all are pummeling low kick for my curum uh and then the Lego maybe doesn't claim grass not for my uh what you call it for my for my crocodile or just overall power jump sludge wave to like kill something get a beast with stuff like that then the slurp of huge threat last time i re last time i faced the slurp of also this geo there talked very in depth why a slurp of such a huge threat to me because my fairies are setting not that good and with a bird it speeds everything and kills everything so that if that is a belly jump barrier i'm in the world of hurt and i have to uh, keep my garbage healthy take it on Nanny Tapu Bulu, since he didn't brought any of his ground types, that's definitely gonna be an Assault Desert Bulu or some kind of that, because otherwise he has nothing for my uh, Manetric. Then Yuxi, not sure, probably his Rock Set or stuff like that, and then Victini, can be a lot of sets as well. Could be, he likes, he's a big fan of special Victini, so he could be that, could be some kind of fairy, could be Choice Scout. Either way, Victini is like one of these overall base 100 pixies, so it can do a lot of things, and you have to mainly have to scout what kind of Victini it is. But either way, looking at his team matchup, I think I am fine with leading with my minute tricking. I just will switch out versus everything. Uh, if he leads a slow puff, I would actually be happy with that because that tells me that he's a sticky web variant. And I think I can way more better deal with sticky web than I can deal with uh, with a belly jump variant. So I'm fine with him leading slow puff and everything else I can basically will switch out because uh, and yeah, threaten it out because he needs to ninja across the speed that. So I am just gonna lead with my minute trick and let's see the match and see what happens. Like I said, very surprised he didn't brought any of his ground types. It was not expecting both, but definitely expecting one of them. Not seeing any. Uh, it's a bit, uh, yeah, what's that? A bit surprising and a bit annoying for my Manetric set. But either way, I lead to Manetric, he leads to this Victini. And I go to the Kalk right away. 
And the hittest thing, uh, the worst thing he can hit me with is, of course, the choice card recreate. I'll, you will have to choice card, otherwise, I will speed him, of course. So I can just click Volta Trot here because after the Eternity drop, this recreate will not kill me. And I can just scout out in general what kind of ID it is. I can take any hit from this. So if it's special, it won't kill me as well. Bar, of course, crits. So, yeah, I just make him off right here and go for the Wolf Switch. Uh, pretty free since there's now ground type on the field. I do make it off. He does stay in, which basically tells me this is either a bulky variant or a scarf variant. And after this mega evolution animation is over, we can see more of the two. It is it gets intimidated. God damn it! Okay, I forgot that animation as well. He does go for the U-turn. So we now know that he is a choice scarf variant. And from the damage, I can tell that he's actually max attack invested. So he's a physical bikini with a choice scarf with U-turn. So a lot of information from this first turn for a little bit of damage. He does go to Joel and Bulu. Yes, gets his search up, and yeah, we just came for gold switch. That's not doing a lot to this Bulu, of course, it's resisted, and Bulu is decently bulky. And from a damage, you can definitely tell, yeah, that is an, that was a critical hit, so we can definitely tell, yeah, that is an assault tested Bulu. And yeah, basically, we go right into our chat and our Gabador, which uh, can get us get up some spikes, scare of course, things out. He does get his classic drain back. And actually, he does get left over back as well, so it's not a salt as he's just max, max special defense, max HP. Very bulky, especially Bulu, but either way, I just go for Spiker here. Of course, I scare him out from the Gangshot, the Bulu just kill him. And he does switch out into Sand Thinky, which is his Uxie. Once again, I'm of course scared out by that. And I do hard switch out into my Assault as the Kyurem because I want to make a more offensive switch. I was expecting Rocks right here and I want to get my Kyurem in before Rocks because I don't have recovery on this. And yeah, I can basically hit this hard with a Shadow Claw. But he actually does not go for the rocks right here. He can see that he decides to go for the core mind. And now this is uh, still pretty threatening. I don't have anything I want to switch into this. Thankfully, my Kyurem is assault. This is so I can take this thing on. And I'm just going straight for the Shadow Claw right here, trying to kill this thing, get some good damage on him. He does outspeed me, so that tells me he is a very speedy variant. And he does get a good amount of damage on me, and that tells me he's a very, especially uh, offensive variant. Uh, so he's speedy, offensive, not bulky at all. But he does have the Kazakh Berry, probably for my uh, Gengar, and so he eats up the Shadow Claw, which is a bit sad. But either way, due to grassy terrain and us having the Assault Desk, we are not free hit KO'd by the Dazzling Gleam, so I can just stay in, go for another Shadow Claw, take the Dazzling Gleam, and uh, yeah, after that, go for another Shadow Claw and just kill this thing. So basically, we will beat this. Uh, Yuxi 1v1, but I don't have anything I want to switch into this uh, to this Yuxi. So I could pivot in, like for example, into my into my uh, Garbodor on the Gazing Gleam and then go on the Crocodile on a Psychic move and get this in. But since it's such a speedy, uh, speedy, what you call it, Yuxi, it will actually outspeed my Crocodile and just go for Gazing Gleam. So if he would have been a bit slower, that was, it would have been a viable play. But since he's so speedy and I need my Crocodile still healthy for stuff like the Vikini, stuff like the um, Neo Lego, I rather decide to uh, trade my uh, Kyurem Black versus for him. Like, I don't really trade it kill-wise, but I trade through very low. Like, I see him only at 19 HP. I right here, I decided to switch it up for Dragon Claw in case he wants to switch him to Greninja or something like that on the Shadow Claw. But either way, we get rid of Sam Finky. But in exchange, we have, of course, a very low health Kyurem Black. He does go straight into his Morgwai his near Lego. And I go through the cards right now. And I can't allow him to get a beast boost. Because if he's a Z variant, like, he gets, he goes, like, for Power Gem. He goes, he gets plus one boost, and then he goes for Z. Uh, plus one Dazzling Gleam, that does way too much damage to my Crocodile, that has even a chance to kill it. Even though I'm a bulky Assault Desert variant. And I can't hard switch into my Crocodile either, because the regular Dazzling Gleam plus the Dazzling Gleam does kill me as well. The problem is that he has a very few Dazzling Gleam right here, and Crocodile is my best switch, and so I actually decide right here to scout for the Dazzling Gleam. And pivot out into my Galvador so that I then can then on the poison, uh, on the expected power gem, go into my crocodile and start the suit trapping and deal with this thing. He does go for Dazzling Gleam, that does of course not do a whole lot to me, and I double out right away back into my crocodile because I still need this thing healthy. I don't want to take a power gem, so I'm gonna switch out. But he switched out as well, which makes me think this might be a choice there because power gem does a lot to me, and a weak Galvador is is good for him for his for his uh, what you call it. For his Balbulu, for his other stuff. He might have just predicted my Crocodile. Either way, he does go into Greninja. I, of course, don't want to stay in on Greninja. I still need to stay healthy here. I can have with super effective attacks. Again, Timid off, which is nice. And I do switch out into my Tapu Fini, which is my designated attack to this thing. But like you can see right here, he actually doesn't go for an attack. Uh, Mr. Dragon Ups, which is nice. He does just go for spikes. So we both have spikes up now, both trying to have like our opponent. And uh, yeah, I could just get from Moonblast killing this thing, but I have to take the to come in, it's especially defensive. Can take on Tapu Fini very well, so I just go straight for the Nature's Madness. And he does indeed switch into his Tapu Budo, so I can get some good damage on that. Take some spikes damage, and with the Nature's Madness, he takes a good amount of damage as well, exactly half. And I can basically hard switch out right here back into my Garbodo a bit. Can take this on thing. 
decently well still since I got... Uh, oh wait, no, we don't didn't see it yet. Never mind. Uh, we've talked about this later. <laughs> but either way, I do just switch out with my Galador, taking any hit from this scanner thing. I'll potentially get another spike up. And yeah, continuing this trend. Galbador switches in. Of course, the Grassy Terrain helps me out a lot, which is very nice. Since I don't have Black Starch, I have a Rocky Helmet. And he does just go for these, which is a bit annoying, because that, of course, will wear down my Galbador more. And my Galbador is getting weaker and weaker, and I'm not a fan of that, because I still need this for the Slurpuff. So I need to be careful on how often I switch my Galbador in from here on out. But like you can see right here, he does get his uh, leftovers. He does get the lead seat, but what you, what you just saw right here is that I actually got my grassy terrain before him, and that means that I'm faster than a Tabubulu, which is very nice. So I scam out. I do just go straight for the gunshot right here. I don't look for a spike. I want to hit something very hard on the particular spike. He does go for Greninja, and I can indeed hit this thing very hard with the gunshot. Like you can see right here, that will do a button to the Greninja. Sadly, not kill it, but I do get a bit lucky right here, and I do get a poison, which means that. Basically, if I get Rocks up, it's his last switch, because he does get Dressy Terrain, he does get Leech Seed, but through the poison damage, he's uh, in range of basically Spikes plus uh, Stealth Rock. So we can deal with this Greninja very nicely in that regard. Get another poison damage on him. And yeah, only thing I need is the Rocks up. I do switch out to my chat right here, because once again, I need this thing healthy. And of course, it doesn't deal with Greninja very well. And I do switch out back into my Walnut, which is my designated check to that being still very healthy. And he decides. Get a Misty Drain, of course, up, so no recovery for my Finny, sadly, and he decides to go for the U-turn. And from this damage, I can tell that this is indeed a physical Greninja. So, yeah, good that I have Tab Barry for the potential Gunshot, but this thing is basically dealt with. He does switch out into his Mogwai, which is his, uh, which is his, uh, near Lego, and I just hard switch out right into my Crocodile. This time, he's not that likely to go for Dazzling Gleam, so I just hard switch into my Crocodile, he might just go for Poison move, he might just go for the Rock move. I could have stayed in just going for Surf, but I still want my Cabbie Berry intact, and I still have my Crocodile very healthy, so no need to Zerf switch. And he does actually predict that, goes for the Dazzling Gleam, and from this damage I can tell that he is very offensive. A Z Dazzling Gleam would actually kill me right here, but like I said, I'm thinking he's choice. He's actually not choice, but he is not Z either, he just goes for the Stare Frog. I just go for Suit right here, because like, I predict him to switch out, being a choice guy variant. But he does stay in, going for the Rocks, and now, since I know that he's not choice, I have a decision to make. I just showed Pursuit, and now I can only take one more Dazzling Gleam. I'm too KO'd by it, so basically, this is the last time I can switch and chip to this uh, Mogwai. So making the right decision right here is important if I want to deal with this near Lego. So if I go for Pursuit, of course he dies. If I go for Knockoff, he dies as well. If I go for Earthquake, he dies as well. So in the end, I decided to go for the Knockoff right here, not thinking he would switch out, because at the amount of uh, at HP Mogwai is at after Spike switch in, it basically can't deal with anything. Even my Manetric would kill it from that range, so I think he will switch out right here because I have multiple ones which did not speed it. I have the uh, Cobalion as well, which deals with it. So either way, I decided to just go for Knockoff thinking he would stay in. And he does just stay in, goes to Dead Gleam, which of course can KO me. But I can KO him with the Knockoff right here, and we will see from that that he was not Z, he was the uh, Sugar Berry. There we go, there's the Sugar Berry, and we kill it off. He goes into his Victini, which of course we know is Choice Scarf, and I don't really have anything I want to switch into this, depending on what moves he go for, so I decided to just sack my Crocodile. Did his good job well dealing with me near Lego, and we die to the U-turn of uh, Victini. I would have died to Hazards either way, so I only could have saved it as a sack, and I have nothing else I, uh, I could switch into U-turn, and he would get gain momentum, so rather I gain momentum right here. Just go back into Bulu, and I'm thinking, okay, yeah, he definitely wants to bait out my chat. My Garbodor, so I can take some more hazards damage, and it's get weakened, more weakened, and more weakened. And I don't want to allow that, so I want to get, want to go into something else, which can threaten this thing out. And I decide to go into my Cobalion right here, since that is the only thing which can really threaten it out, barring the uh, Garbodor. And right here, since I threatened out, I decide to go for my Sterox actually, so that, like I already mentioned, will kill the Greninja, and of course get some nice damage on the Victini. He does actually stay in, and that means for me, okay, he's even going for DC. Oh yes, his superpower. And indeed has his superpower, but because he's a very bulky variant, he cannot kill me from this range with it. I get a very low on Cobalion, but now he's at minus one defense, and now the Iron Head is a guaranteed KO. Not a guaranteed KO, depending on how bulky he is, actually. But now, I can just go for the Iron Head, getting some good damage on the uh, Bulu. Rocks are up, so Greninja is basically dead, so I can just go for the Iron Head right here. This time he does decide to switch, doesn't want to take a hit at minus one. And he does go to Vikini, which of course I expected <laughs> at the first time being a switch in. But right now with spikes and rocks and taking this iron head, which turning out to be a critical hit actually versus him. 
He takes a lot of damage, and it was basically last time this Vikini could switch in, looking at that amount of HP. But of course he gets some aggressive terrain, but uh, yeah. Right now, I do not want to take a hit from this Vikini, so I do just switch out. Still need my Kobali on this very well, that's very well with his team up speed. Everything but this Vikini, I do just go into Jeff, second my Q on black. Trying to get momentum versus him. He was dead to hazards either way, and I do not have hazard removal. And now you can see what he decides to lock himself into, and he does decide to lock himself into Zen Headbutt. Looking at my team right now, I only have three months left. I have the Cobalion, I have the Garbodor, and I have the Mega Man Netric. And the Finny, of course, and I have the Finny, never mind that. So I do decide to switch out into my Manetric right here, because after minus one, the Zen Headbutt won't be able to kill me, and I can, of course, pick him off with the uh, Bull Switch. Still want to keep my Tabo Finny healthy, can deal with a uh, Decent amount of his mods, and yeah, I can just Wolf Switch right here. He does switch out, knowing that he can't kill me, and I can go for Wolf Switch. He does sack his Greninja blow now to the Hazards. So, uh, no kill uh, for my boy Mega Manetric right here, and he does switch out into his. Um, let's see what he goes back into after. Oh, Goddamn aggressive trade, let's make a from that. And he does switch out into his Victini, and I'm like, oh damn, does it live? Does it left hazards? Because I get like 37% off and he lives on the sliver of health. So uh, Chip nicely uh, calculate the hazard damage right there. This thing lives. And now, not at minus one, he cannot kill me with his Zen Headbutt. So I'm definitely expecting him since this last switch. And he's going for a strongest move right now, which has to be V Crate. So I'm going to switch out right now into my Tapu Fini versus the V Crate. So I can pick him off. And then my uh, uh, Cobalion can go to town because of his everything on his team. Killing the Tabulo, not with Iron Head, but I still have Garbodor left, I still have Manetric left to take some chip damage on that, and then of course killing the Slurp of After Hazard damage with an Iron Head. Just so, just go for 10 Headbutt! So I don't know if he predicted that or he miscalc either way. Nice nice move on his part. I don't have a switch into the Headbutt right here. Everything dies after uh, taking the hits because everything else would have to take two, so we'll have to sack my Walnut right here. And right now I'm a bit of trouble. This time I only have three months left. That's what I want to talk to the first time. So my Kamalion dies to. Headers plus the headbutt. My Garbodor, of course, dies as a headbutt as well. It would kill the Victini in the process, though, as well. So, with Rocky Helmet and Aftermath and all this good stuff. But my best chance right here is to go into my Mega Metric, which, of course, after the Intimidate drop, still can take the headbutt after Hazard's damage. And I can kill this thing off with a Volt Switch. Okay, I was actually thinking a lot right here if I want to go for Volt Switch or Flamethrower. Basically, the difference is that at one point I have a different one in, and the other way I would have a Mega Metric in. But in the end, I said Volt Switch is better because that can bring in my Garbodor which doesn't allow the Slurper setup. Because this Slurper setup, it's of course GG. And I could have gone to Kovalion as well, but Kovalion can kill the Boulder, so overall I, I want to Wolf Switch out into my Garbodor, so I can either kill the uh, Slurper, or not, at least not allow the setup, that's the more important part, or, get, or kill the Boulder in the process. But either way, I do just take the Zen Headbutt right here, like you can see my calculations and mathematics are correct, I can, can take it, but I flinch, and that is, in my eyes, probably GG now. Because now, yeah, he just kills my good boy, barring he misses, of course, he does not miss. And now I have to go to Gab Gabodo to kill him with Rocky Helmet Aftermath. And then I only have Cobalion left, and his Bulu is still healthy enough to take one Iron Head. So, very, very annoying uh, flinch right here. Basically, it seems like he will win 2-0 versus me. I go into chat right here, of course, I don't not speed him, he's choice scarf. He doesn't miss either. Let's go see Zen Headbutt. But I do get the kill, not with your hockey helmet, but with the aftermath that activates first, actually. And we get rid of the Victini, and now it's Cobalion versus the world. And there's a very, there's actually still a chance for me to win this game. And the very chance is that I can get a return flinch versus the Bulu now versus my Cobalion. It's still way too healthy to die to one Iron Head. So what I need is a return flinch. He flinched me as a Headbutt, let me get this flinch with Iron Head. I think Iron Head even has a higher chance to flinch than Iron Headbutt. So give, come on, give me this chance, give me this chance, the, uh... Recording is a bit iffy right here. Let me actually throw that down so that usually solves the problem. I go back to Cabra. There we go. Come on. I just go to Cabra. I, of course, take the hazard damage. Very low right here, but I am faster than both the Voodoo and the Slurpuff. So I can just go for the Iron Head right here. And I'm just praying to the gods. Okay, come on. Can you give me the return flash? Because then it's GG. Slurpuff dies after hazard damage and plus an Iron Head. So I do go for your Iron Head. Cabra, can you do this to me? Can you do this to me? Can you get the flinch? And he's too effective. And he can get the flinch. Cabra for the win. We are going to win this game 1-0 right here because we got this nice return flinch. We can't just go for another Iron Head right here. He can't switch the slope off. That fake is gonna die to health plus Iron Head. I go for Iron Head. The Bulu goes down and in a very, very exciting and close match, we are gonna win this game versus Chimpak. Woo! I was like, after this after this return flinch, I was very happy to see that. So we are gonna win versus Chimpak. 
Uh, one, oh, very close game. If he wouldn't have been grassy seed. Like you can see right here, he was no belly drum variant from the start. He was actually grassy seed and burn variant, and he will outspeed me and kill me right now. So, yeah, that was an up and down in the feelings as well. After I was, uh, <laughs> when I was making this match, I was like, damn, he got the. Let me pause it. Oh, I pause it too, too, too shortly. Let's. I, I probably just put an image right here like last time. But either way. Uh, yeah, that was an up and down of feelings. First I was like, oh damn, I lost because of the headbutt. Oh damn, I won because of my flinch. And then, oh damn, I lost again because of Grassy Seed. So yeah, turns out he wasn't actually a belly dumb variant at all. He was a Grassy Seed special variant. So keeping my Gabato healthy wasn't as important. I should have kept my Finny healthy to deal with the... Uh, to deal with the slurp of uh, mainly, but uh, yeah, I was too scared of belly drum. And yeah, in retrospect, I think I didn't make still, I, even though I lost the match, I think the main reason I lost the match was because he has such a, a creative or like unexpected slurp of set. I was way too scared of, of, of belly drum slurp of because I think just six O's me, Chimp even agreed to that. But the reason he wanted to run a special variant was because he didn't want to run, miss play rough, so. <laughs> I can see that, but yeah, basically I played the whole game thinking this is a uh, belly drum slurp from the back. It turned out it was a special grass seed variant, so I had to basically, if I would have known that, of course I had to preserve my Fini and not my Garbodor, and then I could have probably dealt with that, but uh, yeah. All the kudos to Chimp for that set and preserving that till the late game, making sure to get dressed to trade up and all this good stuff, so even if I get the flinch, I win the game. But uh, yeah, either way, that is the match we win in a very close one. Oh, I actually actually enjoyed this game. I think it was probably the the most fun I had in the game so far, going that down to the wire till the end with like, I lost, I won, I lost again. <laughs> that was pretty fun, so definitely check out Chimp and his upload. Uh, his links will, will of course be in the description. He does live recordings, so if you prefer that, you def definitely have to check out his side of the match. But uh, yeah, either way, that is all for this upload. We sadly do lose 1-0, so Chip actually has a 2 0 record now versus us. So the only thing to prevent that is, of course, to make playoffs and defeat him there, because we all know playoffs count double in overall head-to-head -head matchup. <laughs> but either way, we are behind, but we're not too behind. Sadly, it was a very low loss. And next week, we are going to have our first rematch of the season versus Aaron and his uh, Melbourne Rotom. So we definitely have to get a win there right now. But either way, that is also this upload. I will see you another time. Ciao.